wrapped up in that. The multiplication turns to addition. The division turns to what? The subtraction. Log base b of m minus log base b of n. That sort of piggybacks on the exponent rule we know. Our division of common bases. turns to subtraction of exponents. And how about the last one? Yep, P times log base B of N. And that one definitely is the most powerful, powerful rule, I would say, in the sense that we use it most often. It's the whole reason why we can solve exponential equations. We have a variable that's locked in an exponent that we're trying to solve for. If we log it, then we can take it out in front so it's not locked in the exponent anymore. And this one I would say piggybacks on the power to power rule. Again, there's a connection there. It's not overly clear, but you can sort of get a sense for it. All right, so we're going to spend some time expanding, which would be going this direction, and then also simplifying and condensing going backwards. So I believe the whole front side is expanding. So why don't we, just because I know you've done this before, let's do the top three first. Take a minute to do those on your own. And then we will discuss expanding each one. Zach, would you get to the first one? Good. The second one, Ellie? Good. And the third one, Kendall? Good, okay. Did anybody get anything different for any of the three of those? Jack. Right, so he's taking this just one step further. So you split the division into subtraction, but then take your exponent out in front would be the fully expanded version. Maybe? Right, or just cancel out now the ln and e, and you have three minus the natural log of seven. Good. Any questions on those? Nice job. Take a minute to do the remaining six.
How'd we do? Six for six, Steven? Prove it. Oh, wait. Were you a joint effort, though? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Steven. No. Maybe. Sometimes it's fun to give out bonus points unexpectedly. To reward people for trying just because. It's good character trait. Okay, go on. Okay, let's stop there. Anybody have any thoughts on these three? Connor. Can I add them to get what? No, because you can only kind of combine like logs. So if it was log base B of X and another log base B of X, then we could combine them. But not, not so much. So really quickly, um, well, anything else? I haven't done these yet, so I don't know if they're right. So I'm looking for you. If anyone finds a mistake, maybe they'll get a bonus point, no? So this one first is the natural log of x to the one half power, and then the one half comes out in front. So that looks good to me. On this one, we split it up first. Log base, well, there is no base, so we'll leave it out for now. Log of 10 plus log of x. But now knowing that without a log base, the base you assume is 10. So log base 10 of 10 becomes 1, and log base 10 of x just stays what it is. So that looks good would catch on that. And then on this one, we first would split up via multiplication. So log base B of X squared plus log base B of, and I'll also change that root Y to Y to the one half power. And then the two comes out in front of the log base B of X and the one half comes out in front of the log base B of Y. And I like it. Keep going, Steven, this one. Okay. Any questions, comments on any of those? Josh. Okay, so you write, you should bring your five out in front first because that whole thing's in parentheses. So at first, I'll go down here, would be five times the log of four X. And then what'd you do? like that. Well then you if you the five's in front of the parentheses you would distribute it, right? So he did distribute it, yep. So that's good. Did you just not distribute it? Okay, so he distributed it, you didn't um I would say distribute it because when you're expanding you still are simplifying, I guess, once it's expanded out. Like we did in this one, when we expanded this, we still simplified things that were obvious. Um, anything else? I guess the only thing with this one would maybe be to also distribute your negative, right? 
so one third. Shoot, I was gonna give 10 bonus points, but you didn't do that. Reminds me of my, my niece and nephew when I ask them to do something and they want to be paid. Sometimes I like to surprise them and when I ask them to do something and they're like, sure. And they go do it and I say thank you and I just hand them a dollar unexpectedly. Uh, unexpectedly. I, I feel like is that, is that helpful? You see what I'm trying to do there psych psychologically with them? I'm trying to let them do things out of the good of their heart and just be surprised when they get paid as opposed to only doing things to get paid. Of course, then they might just always be nice to try to get paid. Anyway. I'm doing the same thing with bonus points is, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> all right, so that's all good? We On this one, you split up into the subtraction first, right? And then you did the exponent rule for the top one, and then on the sec on the subtraction of this part, we then had to split it up because there's a product within the denominator, which is the addition within the parentheses. Does everybody see that? Would you speak up if you didn't see that? Okay, I'm just curious. Did you do this last year? You did it? Not at all. Okay, so uh, let me just go through this one just so we can see here. Log base b of the cube root of, well, I'm going to change the cube root of x to x to the one-third minus log base b of 36y to the fourth. Um, and then because this one's a product, I also now need to split this one up into the sum of two parts. And since it's the sum and there's a subtraction sign out in front, I need to make sure I keep well, I don't need to write anything because that's just what Stephen did. I need to make sure I keep this when I split it up into the sum of two parts. Log base b of 36 plus log base b of y to the fourth. Keep it in parentheses and then later distribute. So the four eventually comes out in front. It was only on the y, so it only came in front of the four log y. Um... You could see this. Tell me where this final answer would come from. If it was multiple choice and that was the final answer, that would be it. Where is that coming from, Jalen? Right, so maybe treating the 36 like 6 squared and then the 2 would come out in front. Okay? Any questions? Did we all do this last year? Okay, good. On the other side of things, we are writing as a single logarithm, aka condensing. So take a minute to do these four. If you haven't already, raise your hand if you already did these four. Okay. Okay, take a minute. Dense and simplify. That's inherently in any problem. That's the simplifying part.
Are you done with all four? Raise your hand if you're stuck on any of them. Anybody stuck? Connor, which one? Okay. Let's look at this one first. Anything that you know for sure you're going to do first? No. So why are you why are you hesitant to just kind of turn the addition back into multiplication to go this way? Starting with addition, go back here. Is there something that's making you hesitant to do that? Okay, what do you have for the first example? Log base 4 of 64 is a good start, so you're taking the addition, putting it into multiplication, right? You just multiply 2 and 32. Why didn't you do the same thing for this one? Exactly. So that's why I wanted, so you know the property, but you're hesitant to do it because of these coefficients. So we can get rid of these coefficients by bringing them up as exponents. Do you see that? Now, rather than writing x to the 1 half power, what can I write? Square root of x plus log of x minus 1 to the 4. Now, can you do that? Okay. So now this comes together as log of root x times x minus 1 to the 4. Good. Any questions on that? Yeah. Before doing that, oh, we could. Well, because, first of all, we're not expanding, we're condensing. So why would I break it up? Second of all, you're confusing this. That would turn into division. But the subtraction within the log is not the rule. No, you distribute numbers. You do not distribute logs. It's like people try to do the same thing with sine and cosine. The sine of x plus 2. You don't distribute sine. It's like a functionality. It's not a number. You only distribute numbers. Now, if something was like the sine of 30 times x plus 2, that's a number. You could take the 1 half and distribute that, right? So you cannot distribute sort of these logs, these signs that are not numbers, they're functionalities that do something to numbers. Yes? Jalen. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. This thing like that. Okay, let's go back to the first one. We can simplify that more than just log base 4 of 64. Maria, what's that? 3. 4 to what power gives you 64? 3. Note, remember, if we want to know what this equals, set it equal to x, and then translate from log language to exponential. 4 to the x power equals 64. The base raised to the other side equals 64. And how about example number 2, Nathan McMillan? minus just 3 over x like that. And this is in parentheses, right? Okay. So he does 4x minus 3 over x like that. I probably honestly would have just left it like that. Um, that's a little bit nicer to the eye, I think, when you're taking the log of a single fraction versus the log of a binomial. I don't think it really matters if it's open response. I'd take either. But if it's multiple choice, I think this is going to be used more often, okay? But they are the same thing. He just reduced his fraction by dividing each term by x. And the last one. Um, Kyle. Oh, got slowed down. Log base B of what? <coughs> I need 
anybody have any issue with that? Raise your hand if you got that exact same thing. Oh, yeah, only Josh has an issue. Wait a minute, conversation. Josh, what's your issue? What did you have? Log base B of x to the fourth, but you had 36 times root y on the bottom. No, I don't because I haven't done the problem yet. So let me let me do it first and then see what happens. First of all, I want to point out that order of operations is at play here in the sense that when we have two levels of addition or subtraction, you just do them as they occur left to right. So the first level of subtraction is right there. So we would have to do that first, which is log base B x to the fourth, maybe actually I'll take care of all the exponents first and move them up, log base b of six squared minus log base b of y to the one half. So now this has to come first. So that's gonna be division, log base b of x to the fourth over 36. Do we follow that? Minus log base b of root y. Hold on, I'm not done yet. Let me, let me just go one more step. So now this is subtraction, right? So these are going to condense into another division. So it's going to really create complex fractions, right? So we have log base b of this divided by this. So x to the fourth over 36 all over root y. So now we need to maybe keep change flip. And so you keep change and then instead of multiplying by root y, we multiply by one over root y. So log base b of x to the fourth and it will be 36 root y. No, you were right. Yeah, but you obviously did it differently. Wait, did I just do something wrong? Wait, if I keep change division to multiplication and multiply by the reciprocal of root y, which is 1 over root y, yeah, why are you telling me I did something wrong? But you obviously went about it a different way, Josh. Oh, I know what you did. You, four log base b of x minus, and you kind of factored out that minus and put this in parentheses. So you change this, now order of operations, do the parentheses first. You condense that into multiplication first and then did division. That works too. Either, either way is fine. Good, okay. And then the change of base formula. So I don't remember if it was this class or another class yesterday, but people kept being like, oh, I don't remember how to get that onto your calculator. So first of all, we can review it. Your calculator, your calculator. My calculators in high school didn't do this for me. We had to know the change of base formula. But now you guys under your math menu, don't you have a log? Log base. Log base. So under your math menu, you can find log base and it brings up this on your calculator. That there's another shortcut too, though, right? Alpha window, alpha window, option five, yeah. So these calculators, I had, we had the TI-83 when I was in high school, so they didn't have all these nice shortcuts. Um, so I don't really know them that well, to be honest with you. I just get to them the old, old way. But we didn't even have the opportunity to do that. We had to use the change of base formula which is not anything difficult, it's just you have to know it. So the change of base formula, you take the log of the number divided by the log of the base and it will give you, now you don't need that log base, you can just use the regular log button. It works in bases of 10, log of 20, 
divided by log of 10, and we get 1.3-ish. Resist the temptation to make this log. What do what people, what would you guess they do sometimes? Log, log of two, and it does, again, it doesn't work that way. It's not a number working in isolation, 20 divided by 10. That would be like somebody doing this in trig, sine of 60 divided by sine of two, and telling me that that's the sine of 30. That doesn't work. I know it's tempting, but it's not that easy. Okay. Next one, log of 140 divided by log of 5. And then number 3 says to use natural logs to evaluate. So the change of base formula typically, I mean, in the most straightforward sense, is done in terms of logs with bases of 10. But you can just as easily use a log with a base of E as long as it's the same log base on each one. So it would be equally as quick to do the natural log of 140 divided by the natural log of 5. You could also do log base 3 of 140, log base 3 of 5, but then that wouldn't, what would be the point of doing that? Why wouldn't you just do log base 5 of 140 on your calculator? So um, just for a quick using just the log button or natural log, maybe this is a little outdated. Again, I'll say because our calculators now do this for us, but um, it's, it's still worth knowing. It'll still pop up from here, here to there in explanation, okay? Um, one thing I wanted to address from yesterday's notes was the conversation we had about this one and why the calculator was doing it wrong. Did, did that happen in this class? Yeah. So I think after kind of talking it through with Mrs. Hill, she gave me this idea, and I think it makes sense. So when we read this, and, and she and I both agree, without, without brackets, we as humans would read this as squaring this first, right? Just because of our PEMDAS rules. We would square this first, and we're taking the natural log of the whole thing. If we wanted to square the whole LN thing, we both agreed that we would put that in brackets and then square it like that, okay? But the calculator obviously doesn't read it the same way as we humans do. So when we type in the natural log, you know how when you hit the natural log button, it opens its own set of parentheses, right? So because it manually opened that set of parentheses for us, when we do this and then close it, it thinks we're closing the log portion, right? Does that make sense to you? So it thinks we're closing and it thinks we want the natural log of that. And then when we hit squared, it does that. So th that's not uncommon. Sometimes the way the calculator reads things versus the way we read things are different. I mean, obviously, one, one obvious place is with fractions, if we do five plus 10 over three, we read that differently than the calculator would if we pl plug that in without parentheses, right? We all know if we type that into the calculator, five plus 10 divided by three, it's not gonna understand that we want that addition. Like we as humans know that there's a set of parentheses around the numerator, so we have to tell the calculator to do that. So it's just a little finicky thing, but I think it makes sense knowing that the calculator opened that natural log set of parentheses naturally for us. So, anything else? Oh, we were going to Google E. We still haven't had time for that. We didn't say anything. 